Good day. Welcome to another session with Guru Wonder. I'm your host, Gurvinda Singh. Have you noticed that juniors and bosses always seem to be in disagreement? And more often than not, there is a subsurface animosity. But why is this so? In my professional life, uh, I have been leading and managing various organizations. And I have observed that juniors are frequently in disagreement, even in conflict with bosses. Opposition to bosses and by extent, extension to the organization may be open and active. However, most of the time it is passive and clandestine. Conflict saps the vitality of the organization and hampers progress. Uh, what is similar as this phenomenon is, fortunately, there are uh, solutions to this vexing issue. Here I share with you some of the causes of the disagreement between juniors and bosses uh, and the approach to minimize, if not eliminate, most disagreements. The fundamental point to note is that bosses are responsible for outcomes, results, and consequences. And this is how they measure their performance. Not only theirs, but overall performance. Juniors, on the other hand, measure their contribution by their effort, time spent working, and then sincerity to their employment. Obviously, when two different sets of parameters are used to measure work, the result is frequent disagreement. So the solution is also to get juniors to commit to, juniors to get to be committed to the same outcomes and and this helps re remove hurdles in their ability to perform effectively. I frequently use an approach called management by objectives or MBO in short. And this has worked very well for, for me. Secondly, juniors have uh, limited uh, act, you know, control of resources, particularly the use of their time and access to relevant information. Come to think of it, responsibility without appropriate access to resources this is not employment, it is slavery. And who in their right mind likes slavery? The solution is that every junior must be supported with necessary and appropriate resources so that they can deserve results. Thirdly, juniors are recruited or hired for their talents, knowledge, and the commitment of their time. It, however, does not mean that the organization or the boss has purchased the junior's life, their body, mind, and soul. Unfortunately, most managements and bosses believe otherwise. Constantly depriving juniors uh, from meeting their personal, family, social, professional responsibilities and needs produces inevitably produces angry, resentful, and frustrated juniors. The pent-up resentment, you know, comes out in the form of poor productivity, neglect for quality and time schedules, wasteful expenditure, dodging responsibilities, and in extreme cases, sabotaging the organization's working and reputation. Often misunderstood is the fact that people do not work for organizations. They work for other people. Other people within organizations. Organizations are generally faceless, whereas bosses and juniors are individual living beings. 
They have intellect, emotion, hopes, strengths, insecurities, etc., etc. Do you know that several surveys have revealed that 80% of the time juniors change jobs because of unpleasant and unnecessarily difficult bosses? Bosses can be of several types. On one end of the spectrum uh, are timid bosses who mainly desire to be liked. They therefore place minimal demands on juniors. They may be liked, but never respected by either juniors nor their seniors. And the organization performance slips. <coughs> Then there are bosses who are tyrannical, venting their you know, personal frustration and inadequacies upon their juniors. They too are detrimental for professional and team relationship. The important thing is to focus on results rather than on behavior, with box bosses seeking to be respected rather than to be liked or hated. Employees need to be led not driven and guided, then rewarded to be, the, to be at their best. Juniors are least productive and effective when they are <coughs> forced, driven, and unnecessarily harassed. I have always found it useful to discuss the assignment project, pro assignment project with juniors and first get their commitments to the outcomes. Then I ask them for what resources, such as information, budget, authority, etc., they need, discuss and negotiate with juniors, and then conclude the plan. Now, after agreement between juniors and bosses, we discover that both are focused, now focused on the same measure, clear about what has to be achieved. The time frame, the budget, etc., etc., are all agreed upon. Being on the same page increases the certainty of success with minimal friction. These simple approaches, these simple approaches will facilitate superior performance because of better teamwork, focus on results, and greater mutual respect between juniors and bosses. Of course, every individual, if whenever there are two individuals, there is bound to be some disagreement. But in most cases, the disagreements are quickly resolved and in a positive spirit. Well, I hope, oh, sorry, I wanted to add one more point before I conclude. Planning is only one part of the success story. There's also need to focus on the other two parts, effective deployment and periodic reviews. Then there's the fact of what I term as employee discretionary potential, which unleashes the power of employees their strengths towards achieving success. These, these aspects I shall cover in future uh, posts. I hope you liked this video, found it useful. If you did, please do press the like button, share, and subscribe to my channel. Wherever you are, I wish you a good day. This is Gurvinder Singh, signing off. Thank you.